Apologies, my um, computer froze. So when we, we were talking about negative gearing, so the idea of negative gearing is even though you make a loss every week, which you can claim against your tax, uh, the idea is that because your property price will go up over the long term, you should be able to make more on the value of your property rising. This is back when property prices were increasing, rather than um, more so than the amount that you would lose each week by negatively gearing the house. So it reduces the tax bill paid for by non-investors, and then they sell the asset later, and they can make a large capital gain and make lots of profits. Okay. The intention of negative gearing, this is the important part. So you really just have to provide a brief introduction that negative gearing allows firms to reduce their tax liability by claiming um, the difference between their interest and their rent back on tax. Then you need to explain the intention and then some of the issues associated with it. So the intention was actually to boost the supply of housing. So the argument was by encouraging investors to build properties, um, investors would build multiple houses to take advantage of the lower tax rates. So they would encourage people to buy more investors to build more and more houses um, which will cre create aggregate demand, boost growth, um, and reduce the shortage of housing. So by allowing them to do that, they will supply more houses because they know that if they then um, rent their houses out, they can make a capital gain. This will help to boost economic growth, which is the key thing, because we'll build more and more houses that will provide employment opportunities for carpenters and plumbers and builders, etc. And it will also help to allow more houses to be um, reduce the shortage of housing. That was the intention. The intention was increase the supply of housing because investors will be able to make a gain if they um, then rent out all those apartments and that will also boost GDP. But the negative, this caused problems. The critics of negative gearing claim that government intervention in the economy distorted the labour market. The, uh, the intention was to boost housing supply by encouraging construction. Um, that will increase the supply, reduce houses and contain rental prices but keep rent down because a lot of people are providing rent accommodation to the market. So there's a lot more people that are investing in these properties, which keeps rent prices down because there's more houses available and the supply is higher. However, the data shows that there's been very little new construction. What people are doing is they're buying established houses and then just renting them out to get their negative gearing benefits. So over less than 10% of negative geared houses are actually new houses. So critics point out that the introduction of negative gearing has not achieved its principal aim to increase the stock of housing, and it's, also, it's actually encouraged speculative investment, which basically means instead of investing in new businesses, richer people we're talking here, that are able to provide economic growth and employment, or new houses, it's just encouraging people to buy existing assets and then rent them out in order to try and um, take advantage of negative gearing and the future capital gains. So summing it up in simple terms, the aim of negative gearing is to encourage more supply of housing, um, because people would build investment properties. Unfortunately, what it done, it's just, it's done has just led to heaps and heaps of more demand. So people are purchasing existing houses, and then essentially more people want those existing houses. There's more demand at auctions, because once they buy it, they can then negatively gear it. So it's leading to a lot more demand, particularly from people overseas, more foreign investment, and more rich people investing in negative gearing. Estimates claim that investors own just one-third of all of Australia's housing stock. Um, Basically, the government's costing the government a lot of money because they don't get as much in income tax. Um, critics of negative gearing claim that it clearly indicates the majority of property investors are not interested in generating rental income, but rather investing in property for the capital gain, um, and it's a form of speculative investment. Most people that are investing are also the richer people in society, so surgeons and ethicists were the main people who negatively gear, as opposed to sales assistants and teachers that were a lot lower. So essentially what it's become is a way for the rich to try and decrease their tax liability and make money out of their house price going up in value. A further piece of evidence, and just this quote here, he concludes his article by saying that negative gearing is a tax minimization scheme that overwhelmingly benefits the wealthy. Critics claim that negative gearing has had a really bad impact on housing affordability. So when you're linking it to efficiency, as interest rates have fallen and the increase in demand for housing by her first home buyers, People can't get into the market. Investors are taking all the, buying all the houses and it's increasing the prices and not allowing first homeowners into the market. They've pushed up the price significantly and that's reduced efficiency. So when you're summing up why negative gearing is a market failure, explain what it is, explain what it intended to do, boost the supply of housing, but it's not achieved its purpose because not much new housing stock has been created. It hasn't led to a lot of new construction. Most people are buying existing houses and therefore not putting their money into more productive areas. So in terms of technical efficiency, rather than investing in new capital, new, in, new businesses, they're just putting their money into old houses, which is not creating any more jobs. You don't, when you buy a house, besides the real estate agent, it's not creating more, really more production and really helping the economy. This reduces productive efficiency across the economy because we're not investing in um, productive areas. 
it benefits wealthy people, reduces their tax income, um, and it also reduces the sort of the amount of inc uh, revenue available for the government to provide services. In terms of all allocative efficiency, so one, you're talking about technical efficiency is hurt because of a lack of productive investment. In terms of allocative efficiency, it has increased housing prices. So it's reduced housing affordability, more people have invested in the housing market. That's led to reduced um, the purchasing power for black, like, particularly first home buyers. It's encouraged more indebtedness as investors borrow more to purchase property, so we're getting into too much debt. Um, so the main issues there is that housing prices have gone up, home ownership has become less affordable, reduced home ownership for young people, and has also led to um, a higher debt, debt levels in Australia. So in terms of summing up this market, explain in relation to a market you have studied this year, why government intervention can lead to a less efficient allocation of resources. So last time we chose the minimum wage, now we're choosing negative gearing. One example of government intervention is the current negative gearing laws, which allow investors to claim back losses associated with their investment property when the cost of the investment, e.g. interest, is higher than their rental income. This helps to reduce the amount of tax they have to pay and provides a greater incentive to invest in property. Okay, what it is, is first, then the idea of the policy was to boost the supply of housing because investors could build and then make a capital, um, investors could build and then rent out those apartments, so to reduce the price of rent as supply exceeded demand. Unfortunately, negative gearing has led to um, people trying to take advantage by buying existing houses, um, which has increased the demand rather than the supply of housing. So most investors buy old houses and negatively gear them to make a profit. This increase in price has made it for hard for first home buyers to enter the market and has also led to rising debt levels. There's your links to efficiency. One problem for allocative efficiency is the increase in inequality as wealthy citizens take advantage of favourable tax laws. So there are people in Australia that earn $100,000 a year from their job, 200000 but don't pay any tax because they've negatively geared so many houses, while low-income owners are forced to rent or remain living with their parents. This reduction in tax has also had negative impacts for the budget, which can reduce the amount of funds to provide welfare, education, etc. And the increase in speculative investment has also hurt technical efficiency because people are buying new houses as opposed to putting it into productive uses, like setting up a business or investing in new technology, which hurts GDP and living standards. So that's everything you need really is in the last part of that answer. What was it? What do they do? What was the intention to boost the supply of housing? What are the issues for efficiency? One, it's lead to higher property prices, so they're less affordable. Two, it's increased debt levels. Three, it's reduced inequality. Uh, four, it's hurt the budget. And five, it's led to um, investors investing in speculative investments as opposed to more productive.